All right, um, let's kick this off. This is the first lecture in our new series, and I'm going to introduce to you very quickly PubFarm. And as the name suggests, so this is a publicly available database, and it's about uh, information on pharmaceutical topics. And I want to highlight first the three uh, points I really find important or unique about this database. Uh, and so I have visualized them here. The first one is that uh, you can use this database to explore how different terms are connected. So that is one of its assets. Then the second one is you can search for relations between different search topics. For example, how a compound affects a disease or a drug target. And then finally, you can also search very generically for terms like medication, which if you search them in other databases, it just matches for the word. Uh, and then you find a lot of the, the text medication, but here it's actually translated in different compounds. And uh, of course that is very useful because it allows you to ask questions that you would otherwise not be able to. So uh, a little bit of background, uh, pubfarm.de, uh, it's not German only, so you can switch the language also to English. It's offered by the Fach Informationsdienst Pharmacy at the Technical University of Braunschweig. It's a search platform, and as the name suggests, the focus is on active pharmaceutical ingredients. It's free, and uh, I've highlighted here a few of the sources. Uh, because some of them are maybe not so easy to search with other databases. Uh, for example, um, theses that are uh, published at universities, but then maybe not indexed by in other places. And now let's hop right into the thing. So I'm going to transition over. So if we go here, it looks like this. And if we uh, scroll to the very bottom, we can switch the language to English. And I'm going to do a simple search first. So we're going to be looking for hay fever because a colleague of mine just told me two weeks ago, she felt the first traces of hazelnut pollen. So because <laughs> it's been a very mild winter, this is already kicking off. And uh, looking at this, we find a couple of thousand hits. And now if I go here and uh, select this again, I get a suggestion what actually a better search term would be. So here it's uh, rhinitis, allergic seasonal. So we're going to search for that one and do this again. And I have uh, around a thousand more hits. OK, let's quickly um, look at what we can see here. We have a typical hit list here, uh, different kinds of sources. Um, I quickly click on the first one. Then we have some more bibliographic information. We also see this item that suggests that this is an open access article. And if I click on it, and then I'm going to get redirected here. In this case, it's a patent. And so uh, that's how I find the original text. But now I want to go again to the search result and highlight a few of the maybe more valuable or more unique features that we have here. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do here that you can also do in other databases, things like phrase search, you can truncate, you can use Boolean operators like and or not. Um, but what makes PubFarm unique is that they also use algorithmic data extraction. And we find that uh, on the right side here. So automatically an, a list is created of uh, compounds here that are somehow related to the disease that we were searching for. If we go down a bit, we have also uh, diseases that are somehow related uh, to the hay fever that we search for. And finally, also we have genetic targets for this. So that is one of the key things. So these terms are extracted and you see, you can also find similar content or related content. Um, then. Here is uh, some sources that we could select for uh, or also include. If we are not so interested in patents, we can just simply exclude them all very easily here. And if we go uh, down to the bottom, you can also say, well, maybe we don't speak Chinese, so we want to exclude that literature and focus on the other one. And then we also have the uh, keywords from those articles not included in our search. So that, I would say, is 
still pretty standard except of this uh, from this automatic term extraction now here we have cetirizine hydrochloride so that is a chemical and active ingredient of a medication uh, second generation as antihistamine and if i click on overview now i move over into a different view um, we don't get too much information here, but at least we have a structure and we also have a reference to Campbell, another database where maybe we have more chemical information. But now to what is really cool, and this is this drug target disease network. So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. And we see for one in the middle, there is a term that we search for. Then in red, we have other active ingredients of medications that are frequently uh mentioned either together with this or they, they might have uh, interactions with this compound we don't know that from the vision but there is connections and we can also see the small numbers that gives us an indication about the frequency of these uh, co-occurrences in for example in the abstract if both of these concepts pop up then the green ones are the diseases so we have different ones and we also see that the uh, the most or the one with the most connections is rhinitis here. And then we have a second, a bit more specific allergic rhinitis, uh, 115 and 113 connections. And here with uh, a bit smaller, um, the allergic seasonal one. Um, I guess th this fragmentation is sort of the result of the machine uh exertion and i guess you you will probably have to look at all of these to get uh, complete information and then finally we also have the the uh, some of the drug targets what is interesting so uh down here i display the top six so it's always six terms of each category and i can also remove some so let's quickly remove the drugs and the uh diseases now we only have the targets and then we improve uh, or increase the number and here we have hrh1 which is actually the target and you see um even though this is the main target or the desired target of this compound uh, it's actually not so prevalent that we have more hits for others so that raises some question marks for me um but still, this is very useful because you can sort of uh, investigate the literature, what is there and maybe also what is not there that might be interesting to explore, maybe to plan research projects in areas that have not been investigated uh, fully. If we move down, um, this again is automatically extracted. So we have keywords that pop up a lot. Um, so those are plain frequency. And then if we go down, we also have them sorted uh, according to different categories. So here we have indications, we have uh, routes of administration, we have the targets. Uh, so here you can really explore the full list and we could also search for something specific. So for example, if I search for histamine and I see, oh yeah, I only have this, this one here. Uh, according to the species that in, uh, experiments have been carried out in uh, target group, uh, drug associations, interactions, and so on. So this can help you explore a little bit. Uh, and also maybe if you are simply searching for some information, this could also help you narrow down what are the keywords that are maybe most promising to bring your uh, question forward. Then. One more thing I want to show here, I'm almost at the end. So if I click here on another one of the medications, oh, now it doesn't do it. Maybe uh, if I click on another one of these terms, then it also shows the interactions from that term. Now it gets really crowded, but then you also see some of the other additional connections. And now let's uh, look at one of these um, connections. So here is the one of our medication with the actual disease. So I double click on the line and then I get moved over to the narrative service it's called. And here we look at the um, relations. So here we have our compound and then we have a term here in the middle that we can select and there is different ones. Um, so here I'm searching for treatments and then I have my disease and down here I get then a list of these articles, these 55 
that have been highlighted. And now I want to relate back to what I mentioned in the beginning. We can also do these wildcard searches. So we browse here and then we go to the variables and we open them up. And then we can, for example, say, oh yeah, now I'm interested also in other diseases and what they might be that could be treated with this compound. And so I press OK. Uh, now it didn't. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can just quickly do it manually. Let's see if that works. Yeah. And now I have also an, a list of classifications according to the disease. So we, here we have rhinitis, drug hypersensitivity, so, and it's sorted according to frequency. And you can also invert the sorting to uh, look at maybe the less frequent results if you are interested in minor effects. And with that, I'm almost at the end. Uh, let me get back to my slideshow. So these are simply my backup slides. Um, so uh, to summarize, it's a free and open database. You can find these associations between the concepts. You can also visualize them with these spider graphs. And you can also do wildcard search. Uh, you can create the, an account to save your queries. And if you want to set alerts, you can do that via RSS feeds. And uh, maybe if you're also interested in other things that we have here at ETH, uh, many people are aware of PubMed. It's very frequently used because it's free. But at ETH, we also have Embased, which has a much more uh, fine-grained controlled vocabulary and especially this is valuable for people working with medical devices because their indexing is really good. And then I also want to make a side remark. Um, the same people that do Pop Farm, they also have Farm Archive, which is a preprint server especially dedicated to uh, research in the area of pharmaceutical sciences. Um, so if you don't know that this exists, might be worth checking out. And now, um, Yoshi, could you quickly uh, copy the link again in the chat? So I also have a, uh... why is this not closing? <laughs> um, so we have a coffee lecture card and you can download it uh, under the link that's been uh, copied in the chat, um, which summarizes the points I mentioned. And uh, I also want to highlight today, my colleague, Dr. Gina Canarosi is going to be talking about PyMol for the visualization of um, large molecules like proteins.